guys and welcome to a new video. I am back from summer holidays and I'm here for a belated book to baton wrap up. So after the book to baton I went away in holidays to a place where there was no Wi-Fi. So this is why this wrap up comes late. However, I still want to share with you what I read during the book to baton and how I completed all the seven reading challenges. I'm gonna go through them in order and you can check my book to baton TBR as well in a video in my channel. So let's go to the first read and that was decided by coin toss which was the first reading challenge. That book was The Upside of Unrequited by Becky Albertalli. Now this was a lovely, funny, moving, um, really interesting, cute read. I really really enjoyed this one. It was such a diverse read as well in a very just matter-of-fact way. I really enjoyed the, the Twins dynamic as well, the love story was really cute, I was really happy with it as well and it's just, yeah, it was really cute and lovely. It was, I gave it five out of, 4 out of 5 stars if I'm not mistaken and I would definitely recommend reading this book. The second book I read for the Booktubathon was a book that completed two challenges, so it completed the third challenge and the sixth challenge, so it uh, completed the reader book and watched it move the movie adaptation challenge and it completed the book with a beautiful spine challenge and that was Northanger Abbey by Jane Austen. Now I have tried to read this during another book to a font. didn't go well because I just couldn't pick it up because I knew it would take me ages. However, this year it took me fully, I mean counting the amount of time I was actually reading, like a day and a half. There was one day during the book tour fun where I basically just watched a lot of Brooklyn Nine-Nine with my boyfriend and only read at night and which was this book, and I was still reading this book, which was the second, but because the Upside and Unrequited took me one day, I I could afford the luxury. Uh, it's also, I mean, it's Jane Austen's writing, so it takes a, long, a, a bit longer to read. That being said, it was amazing, amazingly written. I do understand that it's not like the most accomplished book of hers, I, in the even though some of some people would say it's their favorite and the best one to start with I mean it's so funny and amusing and I mean the language and the the writing is beautiful the the gothic elements are so funny to read because of course she's kind of joking about the gothic elements but also kind of paying homage to the romance and to the novel which was like still looked down upon I really really enjoyed this read uh, and yeah, I watched the movie adaptation with uh, Felicity Jones and Gigi Field. I really enjoyed that as well. I've watched it before, but I watched it after reading this one to take a break from reading. And it was really cute. And I really like how they put like the gothic uh, dreams she has uh, that she's reading uh, in the book. It's quite funny. So I gave this one, I think, four... 4.5 out of 5 stars, 4, 4 out of 5 stars, something like that on on Goodreads. So yeah, that's that's what I have to say. And also, go read Jane Austen if you haven't, because I love Jane Austen. And this is one of the books that I hadn't read yet. And now I only have to read Mansfield Park to have read everything by her, I think. Or, or, I'm, or at least the six major novels. And it was very a delightful, delightful read. So then I read a book that was not supposed to cover any challenges but it does cover one of them which is read a book with, with green on the cover and that is a biography of Frida Kahlo, this is an illustrated version I saw this on Ariel Bissett's channel because she's obsessed with Frida Kahlo rightfully so because she's an amazing woman and character and person to read about this was very cute, very fast to read I love the illustrations I love the like diary style that's uh, written in, but most of all the illustrations doesn't bring anything new that I didn't know uh, in terms of because it it's very similar to the movie with some hike, which again kind of gave me almost the confidence that the movie it's not so fictionalized that it's based on true facts indeed. It was a really fast read. I think I gave it. Um, four, four out of five stars just because it's a biography uh, it's a very short biography and but the illustrations are beautiful yeah this was my third read and I read it in three hours on day four I think of the book to a phone or something like that after I finished Northanger Abbey and then I moved on to my next read which was again one that didn't complete any challenge except 
just gave me more books to read and that was uh, Royal Love Stories in Portuguese which is Histórias de Amor da Realeza by Gil Paul um, this was just a collection of like histories of couples in the um, of royal couples I wouldn't say love stories some some of these stories here are not actually like some of them have a good ending but some of them don't at all and yeah that being said it was really interesting because um, I didn't know some of the cases. I don't know if the original version has the Portuguese uh, king Pedro, Pedro I, Peter I, because it, it's here, so I guess he actually, that's in the original version, it's not just for to cater to Portuguese audiences. That being said, it goes all the way to William and, Kat, and Kate, actually. That being said, it was interesting and fat, it was not so fast to read, the, the, the letters are deceivingly small. And, and it ended up taking me, I mean, I could only start it properly after dinners, and it took me like five hours to read, which I thought was going to be a lot less time. I thought it was going to be a quite fast read because it, I mean, it has a lot of pictures and like informational boards and stuff, but actually it, it has a very small font, which was deceiving. And that book I gave it like th three out of five stars. My next read was An Abundance of Catherine's by John Green. Now, I had this book on my TBR for quite a while. It's one of the last books by John Green that I haven't read yet. Um, now I only have to read Will Grayson, Will Grayson, and, and of course his most recent release, uh, Turtles All the Way Down, which I haven't read yet. I read this book to complete challenge number two, which is read a book about something you want to do. Um, I didn't know quite sure, <laughs> I wasn't quite sure what I was gonna... what I wanted to do, <laughs> really, in terms of like this challenge. And so I went with road trip because I always think it's gonna be fun with friends or with my boyfriend. So yeah, I went with that and I know there's a road trip element in the story so I went with that. That being said, this would also have covered challenge, the challenge with the cover with green on it because it has the green here. The story itself was quite interesting. I've heard a lot of people say it's not their favorite John Green book and I've had other people say they adored it. I think I'm in the middle about this. So I, my favorite John Green is Looking for Alaska and it still is. However, it's quite funny to see a very lost boy when it comes to girls and so weird around them kind of getting a reality check. The best friend of the main character is quite funny. The girl, it's... Um, I mean, it's again, it's... Uh, a lot of people complain that John Green's girls are like they're dream girls and they don't exist. However, I think I like the characters and I think I like the plot as well even though there is not much of a plot but um, it's fine I think I really liked I mean I, I I could foresee it but I really liked the plot twist and the kind of secret behind like the mother and the business and I liked that I liked the again the reality check that they had with that because uh, clearly the girl was not like living in the real world and that that kind of shook her up which I think was good. Again, uh, the math thing and the equations and I, I kind of find it funny and interesting. That being said, it was funny. I liked it. It was a really good read for a, for a marathon. I, I finished this in one day. It was I think the sixth day of the Booktubeathon but I really really enjoyed it. Um, I think I gave it four or five stars. The next book is the book that completed the challenge read a book while wearing the same hat the whole time and this was this read England Your England by George Orwell I read this in my room wearing a hat for like two for an hour and it was 41 degrees Celsius and I was I was dying a little bit still very interesting read very funny to see how England hasn't changed since George, George Orwell wrote this during the Second World War in 19... 41. Very interesting, uh, of course, very poignant and again, George Orwell is very clever and very smart and a very interesting person with a very specific point of view and I like to read that. Can't say much about it though because it's not like a novel, uh, but I think he's got some points and even though some things might have changed, some of these things are very true still and I think that's very interesting and clever. So that being said, it leaves me with my last read. 
And that completed the seventh challenge, which is read seven books. And that was my very highly anticipated Surprise Me by Sophie Kinzawa. This is her newest release. And this is about a, an established couple. They suddenly realize they have 60 some years to go and they get terrified of being bored of each other and so they decide to make surprises to each other and they go bad very very soon and actually I thought that was gonna be the plot you know like the surprise getting increasingly bad uh, actually the surprise are just a, an element that kind of makes the plot go f forward uh, it was really cute it was really interesting I, I, I also f uh, could tell where the story was going with the father comparison and like how much of a hero a father is for her and when and he and he died so young from the beginning she compares her father to her to her husband and I could tell immediately that that was going to be a pivotal point in the book because it's brought on really early on and of course it's problematic so that was dealt with and very interestingly so and even though I wasn't surprised, I was really intrigued by the story and I couldn't read, I, I wanted to read faster so I wanted, because I wanted to know what happened. I mean, I still, from the most recent books, I still prefer my Not So Perfect Life because it has a city element and the countryside element. Uh, this one, it's much more a, a London book, set in London. A thing that I found really weird, it's again, uh, something that I, I was already aware of, which is British people and their relationship with their sons. Like, the kids never kind of show up to stuff. When she gets home late, they're already in bed. Um, that's not what happened here. Uh, we don't have dinner alone, just because it's already... I mean, I don't have dinner before 8 p.m. anyway, but I never had dinner before 8 p.m., even when I was a baby, so... It's a very different culture when it comes to raising children and I was already kind of, I already knew that but it, this kind of put it in perspective because because it's a British book they don't need to address it they just you know kind of mention it and sometimes they don't because British people probably know what they would do in the situation and it would be the same thing but there's not a lot of like babysitters coming in and taking care of the children if you want to go out you just take the children and I don't know, I've never been refused to enter in a restaurant and I've always went with my parents everywhere. That was something that really stood out to me even though I knew already that there is that difference. That being said, lovely book, 4 out of 5 stars. I would still um, advise you to read um, My Not So Perfect Life and of course I've Got Your Number by Sophie Kinzella because those are my favorites. Uh, Can You Keep a Secret has, has a movie adaptation coming up which I'm very excited about because I really enjoyed that book the second time I read it and now I want to read all of her other books so yes, there's, there's three that I'm, I'm missing but I don't want to read them all in one go because then I will have no more Sophie Kinzella to read I'm gonna pace myself and not read all of her books all, all at once so yeah, that was my last book I r read seven books this year at home, which is fantastic because it kind of breaks the curse of me believing that I could not read that many books at home and that I could only read when I'm on vacation. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, did you participate in the Booktubeathon and what did you read during the Booktubeathon? What was your favorite book during the Booktubeathon? I would love to know that. Of course, Jenna is always my favorite, so that's easily... and <laughs> that's an easy answer for me. <laughs> but I really enjoyed Sophie Kinzella and Baker Albertalli's book, of course. The, those were really well chosen reads as well as John Green's book because they were, even though they were not like the smallest books in the world, they were really fun to read and that's always good. I'm out of breath and out of practice of doing this videos but that being said, uh, that is all from me today guys. If you like this video you can give it a thumbs up or subscribe and I hope to see you soon in a new video soon. Goodbye!